go do that. And then what do we do? Settings. I can't remember. Stream key. You are now live. I am? Yeah. You're on oh. the notification. Cool. Okay. <laughs> we're live. Sweet. Okay. Guys, we're just getting set up. Enjoy for a moment. It's a fair bit of delay. Yeah. The, oh. Can you get my headphones? You've got to be bloody kidding me. Joe Ash. Let me guess. Joe Ash. Yep. Joe Ash. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Um, okay, ladies and gents, let's set up a painting station. I haven't done that one yet. Uh, some light. So we'll start proper at in one minute. But uh, let's just get a few things ready. We need that, that, not that. Have you already started? Uh, yeah, can you grab my headphones, please? Yeah. They should be upstairs. I should be upstairs, uh, bedroom. Okay. Alright. Grab some paint brushes. Gold. That all looks like a good start to me. Um, I'm going to go with some black, obviously, for a chaplain. Hmm. Looks like we've got a few people in there already. Woohoo! Okay. Thank you very much. Alright, people. Um, we are getting there. Oh, hang on. Gonna need some water. That's a fairly important point. One second. and gentlemen all right I don't know if it's going through this or what was going through but uh, let's just see how's everybody doing hang on well it's not going through that that's for sure there's about a seven second delay on the video yeah yeah so there's about a seven second delay as uh, as David just said in the background we uh we will see your comments a little bit of delay so that's that's all right okay what do we got all right ladies and gents today what we are going to be doing is this gentleman so far he's the only one that's really had uh, a decent amount of votes. So it is the Blood Angel Terminator Chaplain, which I have been promising Joel I will, um, I will paint for ages. Uh, okay. We're going to... I'll just send a message to Joel and see if he's going to be there. Or is Joel in the in the chat already. Joel, Joel, Joel. Come on, Joel. Joel. Um, all right. 
painting your P A Termi not termite, termi uh, termi on the live stream. Woot. Okay. Alright, ladies and gents, we're ready to do some painting. Yes, excellent. Joash says, so how does it feel to have a Joash waiting for you to upload a vid? Joash, there's, there's, something, there's something really hanky about the fact that you are there almost before I've even posted the video. I swear there's, there's something. You're, you're watching me. You're in the rafters somewhere. <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, next video will actually be next week um, and it will be a product review. I'm, I'm really excited about this one. It's, um, I have been, <laughs> um, Joel's replied. Uh, Mom also said the lighting needs to be adjusted a bit. Yeah, now. <laughs> um, okay, so what was that? The live stream needs to be adjusted. The lighting. The lighting. All right, what about if we do this? I'll turn the lighting down just a little bit. How's that? Slightly better? And then I'm going to move this one over. Give a slightly better lighting there. Well, if you have the lighting on this side, you can have it bright facing on you. Got the camera coming right down here. This should be should be good. All right. Let's see. We're going to swap the scene to have a look down at the mini. All right. Oi. Okay. That's interesting. All right, ladies and gents. Oh my goodness me! I'm having fun there. All right. What do you think? This guy. Bailey says only you would have that t-shirt. Oh, Bailey. This t-shirt. Come on, have a look at this. Let's go back to the original scene. You can see the t-shirt better. Donuts and dragons. This one, if you remember the last live stream, I had my Dungeons and Dragons shirt. Donuts and dragons. There's a combination of two of the best things in the world. Well, three. Donuts, dragons, Dungeons and Dragons. Anyway, I can't take the credit for this one. This is actually a Christmas present from my sister and her partner, and I was absolutely chuffed when I got it. That was, it was wonderful, uh, and I have worn it on multiple occasions, and really just love the shirt. Anyway, thank you, Bailey, for noticing the shirt. That's that's wonderful. All right, let's uh, <laughs> welcome Joel. <laughs> All right. Um, Blood Angel Chaplain. Now, we're going to be starting. Um, I'm going to put a black, um, a black layer on the armor. Blood Angels are traditionally red. However, chaplains wear black armor. Medics wear white armor, librarians wear blue armor, and what you will see there is their shoulder pads will represent the armor of the original chapter. So we're going to start off with um, black all over the armor. I am using a large brush. Oh, wait, oh, wait, I need to change my, my scene back. There we go. So as you'll see from this, I am using a fairly large tip brush, and I'm just going to be going all over all the armor plating. Okay, feel free to answer questions. Today we have a, a new helper. Emma has helped for the past two sessions and she said it was uh, David's turn today. So David, thank you very much. Welcome to the chat as moderator. Um, a quick reminder to everybody, remember to keep this um, very, very PG, while we are not setting the, the um, controls to uh, made for kids so that you can comment, it is majority going to be kids, I would say, that will watch this in the end. So please keep your comments 
based around that information. That does not look like armor, that looks like it is cloak. Anyway, I have a feeling I'm going to quickly regret um, having stuck this guy together originally um, before painting. All right, anyone got any questions? What's happening in the chat there, David? Well, someone asked, can we have some of your wonderful jokes, please? One of my... One of, okay. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd love to... I'd love to say something just there, but uh, I may offend you. Um, all right. Oh, dear. Okay. Jokes. Um... Okay. Good chat. <laughs> Great chat. Well, I, I did come up with, uh, with one in one of my Year 7 classes the other day, which I, I did like. Um, it's a very musical joke. Um, four crotchets walk into a bar. It was a common mistake. Oh, God. Now, for the musicians, hopefully you got that, and if you didn't, Bailey, the Bailey, only time I've... he's ever not had a joke. Sorry? Bailey, the only time he's ever not had a joke. <laughs> yes, it, uh, <laughs> that did catch me a little off guard, but that's all right. Um, okay, we are fast getting down all the black for the armor on this. I'm also going to put it onto the gun now, because while I may go ahead Maybe and... Down a bit. I can't really see it when you're painting. Oh, okay. How are we going to do this? I'm going to... Just turn the camera slightly. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Better. There we are. All right. Yeah, you... In terms of details, what you can see, it is black. So that's going to reduce the amount of detail that you will see until I start getting more of the model done. And I will do... Uh, like an extra undercoat of this later. This is just my first layering. Um, and we'll take it from there. This model, Joel gave this to me at Clash 2019, maybe. And if I'm unlucky, it was Clash 2018. Um, and asked if I'd paint it up for him and there has just been one figure after another getting in the way of getting this done and I am really really sorry about that but it is high time to get this guy some love and attention so thank you for voting for him I know that only two of you did but hey no votes it was Clash 2019. Thank you, Joel. Good. Glad it wasn't <laughs> the year before. All right. Joel is one of our originals from the club and uh, often uh, comes back and helps at Clash and donates his time, for which I am always, always grateful for. So many of those originals come back and help, and it's just, it really, really warms my heart to see them every single time. Um, we started the Games Club back in 2001, my first year at the school, having spent five years out in country New South Wales. And I came to the club, oh sorry, I came to the school and they didn't have a games club, so I started one. And the year eight boys were the majority uh, majority stakeholders there that uh, came and started doing painting classes with me on a Thursday lunch. So we, would, uh, we would do that. And we started meeting on Friday afternoons. And the rest, as they say, is history. 
Unless, of course, you'd like to hear the history lesson. All right. What is everybody else out there in the community working on? What are you painting? What are you photographing? What are you... What are your hobby passions at this moment? Let's hear some, some points from you guys. This black layer will unfortunately make it a little harder for me to see the detail. But we'll, we'll be able to get around that because I'm going to give it a gray, a light gray dry brush once it's dry and that'll help to pick out everything again. I really need to get one of those miniature holders, don't I? This um, is... Create, so it's got to get around to building a greenhouse before winter. Oh, uh, a green... Yeah, we've been... We've been talking about shifting our veggie patch as well and uh, doing more growing of our own vegetables. When we moved into this place um, back in 2019, September 2019, we um, inherited a lovely little veggie patch. And the rosemary in that has gone absolutely ballistic. But uh, my wife has put a lot of loving care into that veggie patch and we've got spring onions in there now and um, um, and we've got spring onions, we've got some potato um, and a couple of other things, I can't remember okay so Joel has just asked pink eyes or pink somewhere please pink eyes? really? I have painted all my other blood angels with green eyes. And you want these ones pink? Could be worse. Could be asking for an ultramarine. Oh, heaven forbid, don't ask for an ultramarine. For those that aren't 40k players and don't know the um, the sass that was just being delivered, ultramarines are, they're considered to be the Smurfs. They are everybody's first model, it seems. Because you go to a G-Dub store and they teach you how to paint an ultramarine. Yay! Isn't everything lovely? No. I don't like ultramarines. And yes, I did paint ultramarines as one of my firsts. But, Blood Angels. Blood Angels very, very quickly took over from that. Alright, I think I've just about got this coat nice and even. So we can leave that. And I'll move on to the cloak. The cloak will be the next good point, seeing as though it, uh, it is a different colour. All right. An important point that I uh, learnt recently is about washing out your brush don't really stick it down into the bottom just rinse it um, I used to sort of wipe it on the bottom and that was that was really bad that's a that's a bad move um, okay All right there's our black undercoat wait for that to dry and while it does we're gonna do a red cloak I probably should have gone to get some new red because this red is starting to run out. No, I'm going to need more than that. Yep. Okay, get some water in that. Alright, so to my former year 12s, how are your preps going for uni or just life in general? I've seen Cameron has started a YouTube, uh, not a YouTube, a uh, Instagram account for his music. His first one came out just recently. Pink cloak, pink cloak, Joel, you're killing me. They're blood angels. Uh, 
My goodness. Okay, well, I'll, I'll be doing it red, but I'll do it with pink highlights. How's that? We will compromise there. All right. Um, so, what's happening? Any questions from the from the audience? David. No. Who have we got in the chat? Really? Mm. Let's see that. Current views. I've got four. Okay. All right. Well, not too many. It's all right. <laughs> Create. How many votes would we need to get you to paint the clerk pink? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Really? Who's Crate? Who's Crate? Create. Oh, Create. Okay. And, and Joel, who apparently can't chat in the YouTube. I don't know why. You should be able to. Anyway, that's interesting. All right, Nathan. We had this chat before, yes. Nathan, welcome back. Okay. Okay, so I can't actually see... Um who is watching, I can just see the number of people, and the number of people who are in the chat. Yeah, I've got, I can see some of the, the information there, but that's okay. Let's, uh, let's focus on just doing the painting. All right, people. Well, we are doing this cloak. Now, I'm doing it with... What am I painting with? The Citadel Base Corn Red. Citadel Base. Ah, oh, where are we? There. Well, wow, that's interesting to try and do that sideways. Still don't have an answer to the day, to the um. Oh question. my goodness! How many votes would you need to get you to play, paint the cloak pink? I don't know. Well, I suppose if it's if it's the colour that he wants there, all right, I can, I can do that. But uh, I must say, a red cloak would look a lot better on a blood angel. But that's just me. All right. Oh, I gotta watch where my hand's going because it's just not staying on the screen there. Still not used to that jewel. Jewel thing there, pink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw you, Joel. Uh, it just seems sacrilegious to me, as a Blood Angel player, to paint him pink. You know, blood red. That's what we need. All right. So there's most of the cloak. We now need to do the really tricky part of get in behind all of these um, purity seals and paint the cloak from behind. This is where you tend to miss the most of the model. OK. 
Okay. If you um, if you want to have a look at what I'm doing there, let's let's see him. See if we can get him right up into that. All right. We have. Come on, focus, focus, focus. Right in there, behind those purity seals, He's we have the blood pink. You mean blood pink? Uh, we have the the back of the cloak. Um, so getting in behind all of that detail to to paint those that is that is tricky. So what I think I might do is I'm going to water that paint down just a little bit and let it seep into those areas so that I don't have to. Oh, what did I get? Oh. So that I don't have to get so much behind. And if I twist the paintbrush, I can spread it out. Yep, good. All right. I don't think I finished talking about my upcoming video. It is a collaboration. Um, and when I say collaboration, not a full collaboration, but I am working with a 3D designer named Ian Lovecraft, and he is based in Houston. Lovecraft Designs. Um, they've done some amazing Kickstarters in the in the past year or so. Uh, the last, the, the first one that I picked up on was their Asian in uh, Asian Adventures, and oh my goodness, those buildings, um, all sort of Japanese style, absolutely beautiful. Um, I've just been waiting for an opportunity to print them because there's. Not a lot that I'm doing in my campaigns that called for it, but there was no way I was going to um, miss the opportunity to get them. So, got them. Um, every now and then I'll print a, a piece out of it. So, so far I've printed a bell, uh, like a, a gong bell, and Tory Gate and a bridge, which I'll have all in the video. The, um, the next adventure, sorry, the next pack that they had was Desert, Advent, uh, Desert, it's called Desert Sands, and it was meant to be a quick one at the end of last year. And I know Ian uh, was a little bit uh, dumbfounded with how quickly it just took off. Okay, cool, Joel. Thank you for that. That looks that looks pretty cool. Um, all right, so we've done the the red on the cloak, and that's that's coming out nicely. Um, I might see if I could just turn that a bit more. And bring no, no, no. Now I've got it in the shot. That's not cool. Oh my goodness me. How can I do this? Let's get it out of the shop. Oh my. Oh. Okay. Better? Maybe. Maybe not. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to do the shoulder pads later after I've done this dry brush. That is pretty much dry. So let's get grey. Let's get grey. A different brush than that. So I'm not going to destroy that brush. Okay. Any time you are dry brushing, do not use your good brushes. Just don't use them. Use either a brush that is specifically designed for dry brushing, Creative or maybe, maybe you might use one that is 
already a little bit beyond. Create asks, have you delved much into virtual D&D software? And Tomas says, good afternoon. Okay, first of all, good afternoon, Tomas. Welcome to the chat. Um, okay, Create, Nathan. Um, virtual software, yes, we did use... Um, what did we use? D&D Beyond is what we use for for D&D these days, but what was it that we we went into? It was a virtual D&D online uh, online system? I, I can't remember what it was called. Roll twenty. Roll twenty. Roll. Thank you. Roll twenty, um, and that has um, map assets and things that you can do. It has. Um, online dice rollers, online character sheets, but the reason I particularly liked that one is because it was one that had character sheets that you could do for the old original D&D. When we were playing online we were still using the old BECMI, which if you... yeah, the old original red box D&D. B-E-C-M-I, uh, -E I think I explained in the last live chat, stands for Basic Expert Companion Masters Immortals. David Bennett says Rule 20 is okay and free. David Bennett, welcome to the chat. And, um, yeah, David, that, um, yeah, Roll, roll 20 uh, was, was free, which was another really really good point however you can also um, buy virtual assets like the the maps and things like that now I, I did get a couple of the map sets and they're they are really useful to make your own map sets as well um, if you're wanting to design maps print maps uh, for any anything uh, the the stuff that's on roll 20 is actually really really useful and designing your own maps very very simple I, I, I really enjoyed it um, so you know I, I designed an entire crypt that w that had a um, yeah and I think it I think it took us about two or three sessions to go through and, and do everything on that um, that was that was a lot of fun um, you could import maps I imported the entire map of Mistara blacked it all out and then only opened up the parts where the the party was um, where the party was actually adventuring it was great Had a little airship icon that traveled around where they were it was really really useful and you can swap very quickly between maps anyway this isn't <laughs> I feel like I'm now doing hey go to roll 20 Tomas anyway. asked, what, are we, what are you working on who said that? Tomas. Tomas. Okay, to us we are doing a Blood Angel Terminator Chaplain. Now, in just a moment, you're going to see a lot more detail come out of this. Um, Alright, so I am... Camera is up that way. There you see. There we go. So I'm pointing it that way, looking at the screen to see that I'm actually having it on, on shot. So if I look like I'm staring intently at you, it's not you. Anyway, okay, dry brushing. <laughs> um, dry brushing. Let's let's have a look at that. So I have uh, black and white in there because my grey is just about dead. I have mixed the two together. Um, I'm then going through to the newspaper down the bottom here, and I'm wiping most of it off. I'm just having a light dry brushing now. Watch if I. Paint my finger. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but um, oh, hey, that's come on. You can still see the fingerprint. It's not going in the recesses of my of my fingerprint. Then you know you've got enough paint or enough paint off the brush, I should say. Okay, um, similar sort of motion to what I just did with the. With the fingerprint, I'm now going to rub that paintbrush over the areas I painted black before. I've already just hit too much on the hand, but that's okay because we're. This is just our first 
initial coloring of the armor and it will get a lot more after this. This is a way for us to see what's happening in there and see what parts we need to highlight, what parts we need to shade. And I will do a similar thing with the cloak in a little while. But while that's drying, let's do the grey. Um, I always wonder, well, where was I? I went in... Oh, no, that's right. I was talking to one of my colleagues um, yesterday about painting. And, and she's, a, she's a painter. And she knew exactly what I was talking about with dry brushing. Uh, in fact, brought up the term herself, and it was so nice. Not a miniature painter, and like an actual painter. She's a, a fantastic painter, uh, an artist, and she knew what dry brushing was, and it really made me happy not to have to explain it. <laughs> um, I reckon all artists should know how to dry brush or at least what dry brushing is because it's a wonderful technique to um, help accentuate some detail with minimal effort. All right. Now you can see just with putting this little bit of a dry brush on things there's already so much more detail that we can see on that model. Let me wash the paintbrush out and we'll have a look at that. Alright, let's see. So, uh, let's try and get some light behind that. It's now a lot easier to see the detail. We are talking about a black model, and you know, without sort of lighting this thing hugely, not all of that detail is going to come out. But by putting a quick dry brush on that, I can tell you right now, it's, it is actually a lot easier to see. Right, next, 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 next. Let's uh, let's put some other little detail parts in there. I'm going to paint and actually highlight some of the areas with grey. Let's get that happening. Alright, so I'm just going back to the grey I had before as a dry brush and I'm now going in with a bit more of a detailed brush and I'm going to start highlighting sections. So down, down here on the legs I'm going to start there and I'm just going to put Some little highlights. No, I don't think this brush has actually done all that well. Let's just highlight some of those areas. Alright. So, David, are you, um, uh, sorry, not David, David Bennett, <laughs> um, are you looking at going to a virtual D&D? &D? Uh, he says he runs about three games a week out of it. Okay, cool. And do you have players that are local that you're doing that with, people that you knew before, or are you running them with people all over the world? That's all right. I know that there's the delay. That's that's fine. We'll catch up in just a moment. Um, okay. You have a combination of the two. Okay. Some local, some overseas, or elsewhere at least. Yeah. 
And again, I had another colleague who used to um, play D and D online with um, with people all over the place. Um, so he was actually the one that got me onto Roll Twenty. And um, I must admit, I, I never really saw the appeal of just jumping on and playing with people all over the world just because of scheduling. In the past, in the past month or so. The number of subscribers that I've picked up over in the US, the UK, Germany, it's been incredible. But are they able to join in for this live stream? Because it's five o'clock, well it's Wow, it is nearly twenty to six. We've been going for forty minutes and I feel like I've done very little. Okay. Uh, anyway, so they're they're not really able to join in, you know, over in over in New York at the moment, it's probably about nearly nearly four in the morning or something like that. And that would make it very hard for people to watch this live. Uh, all of that uh, detailing. You don't want to overdo it because that will make the miniature look a little bit tacky. But uh, just getting some of it in there will really make it pop. Nathan says you'll have to do a 24 hour live stream one day. Shouldn't be that hard. Twenty-four hour live stream. I don't think so. Wow. David, um, Bennett said, "Yeah, I posted a world calendar organizer with my local time where they could enter their region and see the times. Apparently, it helped a little." That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, my um. My friend who was doing that, he said that was the the biggest thing that um, that made him leave that that sort of setting, was um, you know having to join into a game at, at um, or like get up at five in the morning to go join a game or something like that. She's like, mm, no, that's that's enough for me. Um, you know, obviously when we were in the pandemic, we couldn't really join into too much live but uh, that's where we just have to sit down and be patient and wait for things to resolve so that's what I did Cuba Town Hobbies did a 24 paint uh, did a 24 hour paint challenge yeah they did Joel there's a difference he, he gets paid. <laughs> um, I do this for the love. And um, I, I have to say, if uh, I suggested that to others in this house, there may not be others in this house. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. I... <laughs> Right now I'm going through and putting in some highlighting on joint areas. Um, I must admit the way that, that I paint my models is not like the, the more modern way. I'm very much the old school cartoony sort of, you highlight the edges and that's what we come up with. Because at the end of the day, I like the fact that this is a hobby these are toys they're therapeutic I'm not trying to paint something that looks like it's going to come off the off the screen and join a video game if I wanted to do that I'll play a video game so I am a bit cartoony in the way that I paint these things and that's okay
Yeah, so this uh, this guy Ian Lovecraft over in mm. the States. <laughs> I'm getting back to that. Mom says don't even think about it. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, so <laughs> my my comment there and I'd have just had a had a comment from my wife of don't even think about the twenty four hour challenge. Yep, don't worry. I wasn't. Wasn't my idea. Don't blame me. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> anyway, okay, so uh, Ian over in um, Houston, uh, I've been talking with him for uh, the past few months, was uh, trying to tee up something for the Desert Adventures, uh, his previous Kickstarter. And we just didn't have time for that. He was in the middle of the, the Kickstarter and I totally, totally get that that is a very, very busy time. Um, so we thought, well, we'll try and do something for the next Kickstarter. And the next one is coming out very soon. And its title is Frozen. And no, it's not the musical or the, the Disney movie. It's about the frozen wastes of the north. If anything, it's closer to Game of Thrones, the, throes, the frozen north. Oh, and the, the models, oh, they're exquisite. Oh. Um, he has given me access to a few of them to, to print and um, have a bit of a play with, do a review of. And then he said he'd like to um, include the review in the Kickstarter. And I was absolutely stoked. Um, that's the, the sort of thing that I'd love to do, these sort of collaborations where I'd, I'd approached him to you know, do a video to, to help boost some numbers. My channel, I'm not going to boost it a huge amount. I may get him five, ten subscribers, uh, ten uh, people buying his STLs. I'm happy. I'd, I'd be happy to to do that. He first of all offered to send me um, a, a package of models and things to do an unboxing and again got in trouble because I said no to that but, but as far as I'm concerned I'm doing this to help out him. So there was there was no way I was going to accept him spending money to send me models. David said, oh, I would love some ice and snow inspired models lacking in the collection. Yeah. Well, the, the building... Um, David, can you do me a favour, run upstairs and grab the building? It's on the kitchen bench. There's a lot of buildings upstairs. Uh, you, you should know which one it is. It's the one that's been printing the past couple of days. Um, so I apologize nobody's watching the, the chat at the moment. We'll get back to that in a moment. Um, but yeah, we've got... Uh, he sent me one of the houses, um, a lion knight on foot, sort of reminiscent of Jamie Lannister. Um, and a Fay Rider, which is very pointy-eared elf riding a huge cat. And they, they were amazing. All right, here we go. I'm just going to put this down for a minute. Ah, oh, David, David. Okay, first of all, David, my David, thank you. Uh, let's just swap the scene back. Have a squeeze at this. The, whoops, wrong way. This thing is part of the new Frozen Kickstarter by um, Ian Lovecraft. You'll be able to find it on Kickstarter. And I'm doing a video of it soon. These are not cleaned up. These are pretty much straight off the, the, the printer. But you have tiny little chimney piece that prints separate, the roof piece, the actual house piece, and yeah, the, the chimney, um, yeah, you can actually have the fireplace in there, the 
but the, the basement of the hay, the house, the base area. Um, but it also has like a little trap door you can see just in there, which goes down to the sewer level. And down through the bottom there, you can see it's got the, the area here for the sewers, and the sewers pass straight through. This is beautiful. I've got to say, I'm absolutely loving the look of, of this building. And cannot wait to get in and get it painted, get a, a full board of this stuff going. David reckons it's fantastic. Yep, absolutely fantastic. I would agree with you wholeheartedly, David. Um, so that's, it's just called House One, I think, <laughs> uh, or the Manor House. And it is the first in the series for Frozen by Ian Lovecraft. Absolutely, thoroughly recommend this. You, you should paint it up like gothic or a fairy tale thing. Ooh. Oh, like the house of the um, Onceler from the Lorax. Nice. It kind of has that wonky sort of shape to it. Yeah, the it, it does. It, it it is reminiscent of the Lorax. I mean, the the steps going up at the front, the the house sort of curving out a bit at the top. It does have a bit of that. Ian, if you're watching, the Lorax. <laughs> anyway, that's that's cool. I can think about that. I, I will be trying to tie it in with the rest of my terrain. I, I don't know if um, uh, many of you watched the video I did on the Town Builder system, different different company, uh, and those guys, they're, they're fantastic as well. Um, but anyway, the Town Builder system, I, I had a lot of the buildings that I've painted up there um, on display for that. So are we painting in a similar vein? But yeah, we'll I'm going to rewatch the Lorax and see what sort of stuff we can do there. All right. Um, because it is ten to six, I, I'm not going to get to finish all of those highlights at the moment on the black. So let's do something else. I'm going to take some of that white right now. Pink. Oh, really. Okay, okay, we go in pink. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Let's mix those two. T well, hang on. Let's swap this back. Swap this back. Nathan's excited. Nathan, okay. I don't know why everyone's excited for for the. Pink. This is this is breaking my heart as the Blood Angel player for the Blood Red to go to a pink. I have nothing against pink, but Blood, pink. blood Angels. Uh, it's blood anyway, pink. Joel's pink model. isn't blood. Your yeah. What was that? Your blood isn't pink. No, it's a dark red. Anyway, so. I am now using this pink as a first layer. Mix the two together, a little bit of white into that maroon. I'm using a, not a fine detail brush, but uh, better than like a base coat brush. I've watered it down slightly. Um, and what I'm going to do there is all of the raised up areas, that's where I'm going to run over with this pink. Bailey, Nathan and I will agree that pink is man manlier than blood red. <sighs> you silly deluded boys, you. So this, this color will be used 
as the first in a highlighting um, session where it will be used to just draw the eye to the folds and we'll do a lot more after that Along the base of the cloak, I um, will put some up, and I don't know if you can see there as I'm going. What I do is make it a bit more of a triangle going up, just so that as I'm blending it later, it becomes a little easier. When they fold outwards, I go out a bit more. This larger part here, I'll put the whole lot on there. Just as this is the first layer, you can see it's not that different a color. So I don't put a lot of effort into only getting the edge. This is more the raised section. Mom says this is the younger generation of blood anger. Blood anger, yep, yep. I'm assuming blood angels or something like that? Mm. Maybe not. Poor blood angels. Sanguinius will be di displeased. Ross, if you're watching, just remember you voted for this. I think it looks beautiful. Oh dear. I have some pink paints if you want me to get them. No, that's okay. I do have pink paints. I actually have one right here that I was using on the latest of the um, mushrooms, which I can use in a moment. But uh, first of all, we need to get down to that level. All right. So let's have a look at the subtlety there now. It's not that, um, not that much of a change yet, but you should just be able to see a little bit of a difference in the colouring. Yep, just slightly lighter colour in that cloak. All right. Now what we do. We take the exact same colors. We take a little bit more of that white. That is way too much of the white. Let's get some more of the red. Oy. And now I've probably got too much of the red. Yes, I do. Oh, come on. That was not much of a change. A little bit more white. We can go absolutely nuts with highlighting and just keep changing that tint slightly each time and go down you know five six seven different highlight layers and you can do that easily and on something like a cloak so incredibly easy to go overboard with it but if you want to get something that is ready for the tabletop you do not want to go down that rabbit hole so now the first of that little bit that i'm not going to do is right in the middle I'm going to leave that little snippet of line there with the previous highlight color. I'll go over that edge part again. We 
when I do this next highlight level I am not trying to cover all of what I painted before I'm trying to get some not all and every time I add another highlight level I aim to get less than the one before that We are starting to see more of the detail here now. Alright, so ladies and gents, things that we are actually approaching six o'clock. Here's something for the future. I posted last week about hitting 300 subscribers and we'll do a video to celebrate that. Now there is over 350 before I could even do the video, the live stream, to celebrate 300 subscribers, we gained just over 50. I am very humbled by that. I really am. And a little bit dumbstruck as to how that is happening. Very happy that it's happening, let's be honest. Um, but just not really sure how. So rather than run the risk of possibly doing another live stream next weekend if we get to 400 subscribers, <laughs> I, um, I'm just going to say we'll do the next video at 500. I think that's the easiest thing to say. I think I had originally said that I wasn't going to do one at 300. But it was... It is a lot of fun doing these live streams. Um... Maybe next time, hopefully, we'll get a few more people in that chat asking questions. You are welcome to ask questions. All right. I'm thinking that we are nearly done for time today. And what have we done? We've we've put on couple of coats of highlight onto the cloak and we have done a little bit of highlighting onto the armor of the chaplain. That's kind of where we're at with him. Oh look, one more layer, one more layer. We'll, we'll do one more. But I'm now going to swap to my Find a detail brush. It's 63 minutes, by the way. It's gone for 63 minutes yet, because we started just before 5. Alright, I'm taking a little bit more of that, that white. I'm mixing it in at the top here. And gradually blending in until I get a reasonable colour shift. That will be good. Add my water, twist my paintbrush into a point, and highlight. And so now I want to try and get a much finer line. I don't want to see big blobs of this color. Now I leave out a little bit more of that um, cross-section there. And the line Nathan may said, not... Uh, now imagine doing this 23 more times. It makes a 24-hour stream seem almost doable. 
Yeah, yeah, um... No. <laughs> no, no, no. I... <laughs> Well, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to say it's never going to happen because you, many of you know that I'm not sort of a, you know, never say never sort of person, but it'd want to be for a good cause. I, I could handle, if we, if we did it to raise funds for something, you know, like we, like a, Raising funds for Anala Fair, uh, Anala, the the school for, um, uh, school for disabled and people people with disabilities, that I would get behind, majorly, but I don't think it's something that would be worthwhile doing yet. I'm. My channel is building, but it's not quite there yet. Oh, too much just then. All right. So now these highlight levels are not going on as much of the model. And they're just sort of going on edgings. Nathan said, fingers crossed. And also Chow. So I'm guessing he's left. Sorry, what what? Uh, Nathan said fingers crossed and also Chow, so I'm assuming he's left. Yeah. And then Hobo Joe Senior. So it will be there before long. Yep, yep, really hope we are. I mean I'd I'd love to have I'd love to be able to go, hey, look at that, I got a thousand subscribers. Woo! I'll get there eventually, maybe. But it's just taken some time, and that's okay. Eh, at least we're not getting the uh, the comments today about you know when am I going to do a um like a a monopoly um, <laughs> live stream. Funnily enough, that person I'm teaching this year. Interesting. It was. All right, all right, all right. I think I'm just going to put this down now. That will do. We've worked on two colors. That's it. But those two colors now have shading. Let's look at him. So we, oh, well, I just don't get used to that side look. Ah. Andreas asks, got any plans for your 1K sub special? Um, yes, I do. When I hit a thousand subscribers, I'm going to look at painting something up and giving it away. That will be the 1,000 point, uh, 1,000 point, the 1,000 um, subscriber video. We will look at taking a longer poll, vote for the miniature, and I will paint it up, and I will give it away. Said That's a thousand subscribers. Some War Machine 40k games will make a battle report for that. I think a battle report would be interesting, but I don't know. He also called dibs. On the model that I give away? Oh, one case of one thousand point forty k games. That's not very much. I know, but it is something that could possibly be done in an hour. <laughs> um, all right, so there we go. This is this is what we've achieved. Um, so a, a bit of a cloak and some grey highlighting on the armor. Now that grey highlighting on there, I will still go back and do. Uh, at least one extra light grey highlight on that. Um, so what, what's that? Let, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Da, 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 da. If I just take a little bit of grey, let's look at that. If you can see that colour difference there between that one and that one, yep, that grey we will take into 
like the very corners of of areas that I highlighted before. Um, all those little little bits they will get just that extra light gray. Shoulder pad. So it doesn't need a lot. Just needs a little to stand out. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it there, folks. I think that's that's good. It's a good start. It's a good start. Yeah, poor old Dragon didn't get a showing today, but that's okay. He got two before. And this guy didn't get the love, so he's got it this time. Oh, look, see, I'm distracted. I can't even stop the painting now. All right, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm stopping, I'm stopping, I'm stopping. <laughs> Once you get into that swing of painting, it's very hard to walk away from it. Um, all right, so, ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to our original scene. Here we are. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you are watching this one at a later time, thank you so much for watching through to the end. Really appreciate it. Uh, your patronage there. The um, Blood Angel Terminator Chaplain got some love today and he is on his way. Joel, thank you so much for, uh, for, the, uh, for the miniature, which I am painting up for you, and we'll give it back, don't worry. <laughs> um, we uh, will make sure that we get this finished up. Anyway, um, ladies and gents, thank you so much. 300 subscribers, but already well past that. <laughs> I don't, I just, uh, I really just, I, I don't understand how that happened. We had uh, one of my videos on modular, modular boards, modular terrain boards. Beginning of January, it had only just over 100 views. It now has over 2,000 views. <laughs> it, it just, Daggers me that that video has taken off. I'll, I'll be brutally honest. Out of all of the videos that I would have picked, thinking, yeah, that, that's that's my best video. That's my best video. So that wasn't it. That wasn't it. I would have thought it would have been you know, the mushrooms or the rivers. The 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 water mill was so much fun. I thought that might have done it. Anyway, doesn't matter. People like what they like, and that's all good. Um, all I'm doing is having fun building terrain. All right, so until the next live stream or until uh, the next video or the next chat, don't forget you can follow me on Instagram, that is at Tech Adept Crafts, um, or just subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure that you never miss one of those videos. Guys, keep hobbying, have fun. Cheers. Thank you, David, for uh, following the, the chat line. And one and last one. So Andrea says, see you soon. Congrats on blowing up. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you, Andreas. We'll see you soon. You're in the D and D tomorrow. I'll try not to kill the whole party. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> until then, I'll see everybody later.